Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, your Final Cut Bro. Today we have an exciting tutorial taking a look at working with keyframes in Final Cut Pro. This is suggested by Daniel Karras or Karis sir. Sorry, I don't know how to say your name. I think it's Karis, but I could be totally wrong. So thank you for the suggestion. And I really do appreciate when you guys send suggestions my way. It does help me come up with content that you wanna see. So if you have any other suggestions, make sure you hit me up in the comments. Okay, so I have a really basic scene here. I just have a gradient with a circle on the front. Now I am using the Better Shapes plugin created by Surge. It's a totally free plugin and I really strongly suggest it if you work with shapes in Final Cut Pro. It just gives you a lot of extra control. All the animation stuff we covered today applies to literally any other effect. This is just to have a visual indication of what is happening on the screen. The very basics of keyframe editing comes down to using the transform tool. So we have this transform tool. You can also get that with shift T. Now, if we come on up to our video inspector, we can actually add keyframes up here next to any of these attributes. So if I add a keyframe in the position attribute and I progress ahead, anytime you add one keyframe, if you progress ahead and adjust the attribute, it's going to automatically create another keyframe. So that's just a really quick way to easily animate very fast. Okay, so now that I have this animation here, you'll notice this red line, and that red line represents the exact trajectory that this item's anchor point is going to be following. This can give you some good visual indications of what is happening. If I select another one of these keyframes, because this is a smooth trajectory, we actually gain the ability to work with some of these handles and we can create a Bezier curve to really adjust how our animation plays out. And it's going to follow this wider trajectory rather than going straight to that point. So I can adjust that. And now it's gonna have kind of a weird animation there. So let's say that I want this line to actually be a straight line and I want it to be at a constant rate because as it is, this will play out, it'll start off slow and pick up a little speed and then slow down again. So if we want it at a constant rate, we can right click any of these points and these points represent the start and the end and the direction of the arrow represents the order that it plays out. So if we right click, we can set this to linear and now this end point is a linear point. So you'll notice how it's a straight line at this point. However, this point is still set to smooth. So we'll need to right click and now this will have a constant rate from point A to point B. Okay, so that's just really basic stuff working within the browser. Now let's get into some of the animation editor stuff, which I really, really like. So if you select your clip, you can right click and you can go down to show video animation or you can also push control V. Now you'll also notice that it gave us a few extra animation points up here. So you can create keyframes up here and you can jump ahead to a keyframe or jump back. Okay, so a couple things to note with the video animation editor. The video animation editor has this icon here on some of the layers. That indicates that you can double click that layer and now you'll have an expanded view of what is happening. So I can create some points by option clicking, option clicking, and now we have these two points and now this is going to fade out with the opacity on this particular layer. Now, if you right click a line, you can actually set it to different ease modes. So now it's got a nice S curve. So now that I've set my ease curve, you can actually move these left or right and that will set the speed of whatever you are animating. So if we want it super fast. Now, another thing you can do, flatten this out a little bit, is if you push Option and Command, you can click anywhere on this line and you can adjust the entirety of the animation. Now, one thing to note with this is if you drag this too high, it's going to flatten your curve. And unfortunately, it does not save the animation state. So your animation will be ruined. So just keep it low enough so that you don't accidentally ruin your animation. 
Another really handy thing you should know is that you can actually see how we have the opacity here. If we click and drag these handles, that will actually create a fade handle. So it's just like a, a fade transition or something. The next important thing to know in the animations is this little arrow next to each of the names. If you click that, you can actually adjust specific properties. And this is super useful. See how in the transform editor, we have this double keyframe, but we don't actually know what these two keyframes are. So if I select this and I go down to position, this is going to black out all of the keyframes that do not apply to the position. So you can very quickly see, okay, these are all just the position properties, but it will not allow you to animate the blacked out keyframes. So that's just a really easy way to work with a specific property on a clip. And that about wraps it up. That's kind of all you can really do with the animation editor. However, this does apply both to the uh, video animation, but it also applies to audio animation. So if you push control A or right click, you can do the same things. Note how I have this cathedral reverb on here. And if I down, I click on that, we can actually set our adjustments just like in the video animation. But something to note is you can't right click and do ease in or ease out, but you don't really need to with audio. That about wraps it up. Thank you, Daniel Karras, for your suggestion. I hope this was helpful to you. And uh, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next week. Thank you.